Joey Burns, that sounds really good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's great yeah. to be back here, Nick. Yeah. Um, 20 years of Calexico. That's wild, isn't it? It really is. And more, you know, if you think about the time that, uh, that you and John back there on the drums have been together with friends of Dean Martinez and Giant Sand. And I mean, mm-hmm. this is a good long time. You guys have been musical collaborators. Yeah. Way to go, John. How's it feel back there? <laughs> he says it's, it says it feels great. <laughs> he likes being back there behind the drums. Yeah. I suspect you've done enough collaboration to know when to sort of, you know, work with each other to sort of like fight for your own musical idea or when to uh, acquiesce and give in and all that stuff. I'm going to double check with John real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he says, hell yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. And that's, and that's part about, you know, being in a collaboration with musicians just to begin with. And certainly you know that because you have this incredible show, you have all these guests come on and then you, you collaborate. Yeah. And so it's fun for me to watch you do the same thing that we do. Oh, cool. You know, so it's... Um, it's a language and it's an art, but, but really having a partner like that that you're so, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a whole other kind of marriage, really, and you've got to make stuff. For sure. And yeah. all the musicians that we're playing with, we've been playing with for some time. Yeah. Um, and so there, there's a lot of similar kind of, uh, you know, nuances and aesthetics that we kind of go for. And at the same time, we're kind of looking for something new to throw in the mix as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. You know, uh, so there, you know, that, that brings up the uh, idea of traveling to Mexico to, to work in, on the demos and kind of help create these songs. So what was that like? What was that whole experience like, just, just being in a, in a different environment? Mm-hmm. Where in Mexico were you, by the way? We were in Coyacan, which is a very historic neighborhood just south of the city. Um, it's a colonial town. It's beautiful. It's where Frido Kahlo, uh, Frida Kahlo uh, lived her Casa Azul is there, and uh, wow. there's a lot of history. A lot. It's always been known for its kind of bohemian uh, uh, citizens that live there. Yeah. Is there a is there a recording studio there? Or where do you just so sort of hole up in a house, or what did you do? It was in a house, yeah. um, but there are quite a few studios there, wow. and they always, you know, we met some of the uh, some of the musicians that have studios, and they're very generous in offering us gear, microphones, what wow. have you. But we just we wanted to kind of keep it simple. Yeah. And just stay in one location, you know, eat, sleep, play music, and then venture out during the night. Yeah. How late at night? Well, it depends. <laughs> you know, some of these guys like to wake up early and go running. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's, that's a whole another kind of late night right. for me. 8 a.m. <laughs> running. <laughs> that feels late night to me. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, you know, again, longevity in the music business requires some... Uh, some uh, uh, course correction somewhere along the line that could involve running. I got the hint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I try to walk a lot. Yeah. So uh, do the songs start out sort of as I imagine they do, that, that they start out as sort of um, musical ideas and they come together as sort of a bed or, or, or a palette mm-hmm. and, then, and then words and lyrics come later? Or how, What's your writing process like? Mostly, uh, you know, focusing on rhythm, and that's John's department. Yeah. And then no uh, kidding. Yeah, what for sure. Yeah. And uh, and some chords and some mumbling, a lot of mumbling. But every now and then, like the last song yeah. we just played, "Falling from the Sky," I had the lyrics already penned. Yeah. And then it was a matter of finding the right right kind of song. And I was thinking in my head something along the lines that Flaming Lips might do, you know, with crazy synthesizers and. Woo-hoo-hoo. That kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Get, get the kids all excited. <laughs> I've got a couple. Yeah. So they were really excited, <laughs> especially when I said, uh, uh, where do you go? And then they thought, Daddy, you just said the lines to one of my favorite movies, Frozen. <laughs> so they last right on. That was their favorite, first off the bat. That's the toughest audience, probably, your kids. That's um, for sure. There are a lot of great guests on this project, some of whom, uh, many of whom actually you've worked with before, but you mentioned, you know, Nico Case and mm-hmm. Sam Beam, from, you know, Iron and Wine, uh, Nick Curata from Devochka, uh, Ben Birdwell from, or Bridwell from Band of Horses, mm-hmm. and uh, Pieta Brown, and uh, a couple of voices that I hadn't heard before, Carl Morrison and Amparo Sanchez, I think, yeah. right? Right. So how did you find, you must be an avid music listener, just like constantly listening to new stuff. Me and all my friends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of diverse talent in the band. You've got musicians from Spain, from Germany. Um, and so when you travel as well, you tend to kind of seek out 
cool record shops or just listen to what's happening at festivals. And uh, yeah. so that's kind of how a lot of that has transpired. And did you have the guest artists in mind? Because they're all singers. So did you have the guest artists in mind with each song or did you sort of let that happen organically? They just kind of showed up and said, you'd be great on this one or... Yeah, it was kind of a slow process, and um, it started off with asking uh, Sam Beam of Iron and Wine to sing on the song Bullets and Rocks. I just felt like that would be a good fit, um, and we had the music pretty much all sewed up. And in fact, a lot of the tracks, the music kind of came first, and then the idea of adding more vocalists was an afterthought. It just c kept on rolling and rolling yeah. and building. And of course, we wanted to invite guests from Mexico, and so, uh, so Carla Morrison is singing on a song called Moon Never Rises which we'll play later tonight. And um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, there's some instrumentalists too. There's a really great harp player from uh, San Antonio named Adrian Perez. Um, Tom Hagerman from Davachka plays mm -hmm. violin on a couple songs. Greg Gleese is playing steel on some stuff, right? He's great. Yeah. I love Greg. Yeah. Well, it's great. You've got a nice little community and, and you're able to sort of bring, invite people in. And again, it's, uh, it's, it is a, um, it's a beautiful and expressive palette that you create for these songs. It's a, it's a, it's a really, uh, it does set a, a place. It sets a kind of a tone for what these songs are about. And mm. they're mostly pretty darn depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I think we share the same, uh, you know, taste, right? <laughs> I don't really mean that. I mean, what I mean, and there's, there's a lot of songs about longing and dislocation mm. and being disoriented and finding one's place and you know that's a that's a pervasive theme in in lots of people's lives and right. so it should be in those songs yeah uh, for sure i mean you know and then at the same time at the end of all that you know darkness and brooding um and melancholy there's a little light at the end of the tunnel there's a song yeah. called follow the river which is that that little yeah that little light that's shining yeah in case you just tuned in you're listening to e-town here with joey burns of calexico um you know, a lot of people have talked about your songs as being cinematic and conjuring up these images. Do you think about that? Do you think about, well, this might be good for a movie, or I'm going to make something that's going to, maybe I'll, uh, there's a filmmaker I know, and maybe he'll like this piece for, mm -hmm. do you ever think about that when you're making records? No, it's, it's mostly just kind of go with your gut, make some, some music, add a bunch of stuff, uh, despite John's... Uh, Sometimes he's urging me, you know, don't you don't have to add the strings on you know, or or things like that. Um, yeah, he likes the way things sound rough and raw. And so ironically, when we did a soundtrack for a documentary called Circo about a uh, traveling uh, family circus in Mexico, the director said, I like when it's more raw, like uh. on, on your first record. Oh, and wow. so we went back to that, which, you know, when you say soundtrack, I think strings. Right. And so. Um, it's ironic. Yeah. Well, you think, you know, John Williams or one of these sort of great yeah. soaring scores mm -hmm. that's going to make people cry on demand. Yes. Yeah. You know, I did grow up south of Hollywood, so I guess that has a little residue inside of me. It's all music, you know. I mean, it's all music, and you hope that your music creates an emotional response. You hope that you're, what you're putting out there does, in fact, mm -hmm. connect people to some, some depth of feeling. So I just, I just wondered about it in terms of, you know, because you've had success having, having your songs, so, you know, Get, get become part of visual projects, so. Yeah, it's always amazing. You never know where things will go. I right. mean, it's like, you know, next thing you hear, your song, Minas de Cobre, which is an instrumental inspired by hearing some of the mariachi musicians in, in Tucson, um, winds up in one of the final episodes of The Sopranos. It's kind of like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting, and I think, you know, I don't want to get too deep in it, but there's, this, um, I, I was talking yesterday about this um, uh, sort of balancing act between art and commerce and, and how you, uh, it's, it's hard to keep them separated, but at the same time, most of the situations that do turn out to be so successful or financially rewarding are serendipitous like that. They just, right. you make good art, and if it's good art, it's going to work. It's going to find an audience. you got to go, again, you yeah. know, just with that, that love and passion for what you do. And I think that I, I recognize that in a lot of musicians that I play with, for the most part, that they, they would be doing this even if they had to pay to you know, play on a stage somewhere. Right. And, um, and I kind of consider them lifers like me. Yeah. Well, and touring with a big band is not inexpensive, so this is a decision you make. You, you're going to honor the sound of the record, you're going to honor the songs, and be yeah. uh, a band with your friends and travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a commitment. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And it's also that balance between your home life as well as the professional life, and right. that's uh, another facet of learning right. that is coming into 
into focus. Yeah, especially since you have twins. That's right. Yeah. Stereo. <laughs> yeah. Stereo field. <laughs> Um, we're going to get back to music. I love the photo in the, uh, of the two Citroen cars and uh, you guys, and it seems like if you don't own them, those would be good for you each to have one of those. Yeah, except that John claimed the blue one and I wanted the blue one. Oh, okay. But ironically, I'm wearing red tonight and, yeah. and you're wearing blue. Yeah, okay, well, maybe we'll go shopping for those French, old French cars. They were pretty good. Nice it's looking. It's all about aesthetics. You see, and John has always kind of steered me and probably a lot of people over there in the band as well towards finding... You know, cool old vintage Red Wing boots, or he's got a certain style. Yeah. Is it okay if I talk to you like that? <laughs> About you like this? Yeah. I mean, I call it classic convertino, whether it's a car or a vintage shirt. Yeah. You and know, he, he saw those cars and he goes, I got an idea for a picture. Yeah. I'm like, all right, this is great. Yeah. And I saw it, I'm like, wow. We need people around us with better taste than ours. <laughs> that's just the way, that's the way it works. Sorry. That's yeah. quite all right. I'm, I'm following <laughs> your lead. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I am really happy you're back and really enjoyed the new record. Let's hear some more. Welcome back, if you would, Calexico. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>